Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the differences between Clip Studio Paint on a tablet versus the desktop version just to give you the bottom line up front the functionality for Clip Studio on a tablet, on iPad and also on Android it's essentially similar to that on the desktop so whatever you can do with CSP on a tablet you can do on the desktop vice versa alright so let's open Clip Studio. This tablet that I'm using, this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. User interface and layout of the tablet is similar to the desktop with very minor differences. Depending on the resolution of your tablet, you may see that the menus, the icons, the tools, the palettes, they may appear bigger or smaller. And also depending on the resolution, sometimes you may see the icons, they get cropped off because there's not enough resolution to show everything. Clip Studio Paint on Android and on iPad, it's, it's really the desktop version essentially. So um, all the menus are still here. These menus, they are the same as on the desktop. Let me show you some of the differences. So on the tablet, the preferences, they have their own menu. On the desktop, the preferences are actually grouped under the file menu. And also notice there are no keyboard shortcuts beside the name of the functions. This is CSP on Windows. And here you can see the keyboard shortcuts are listed beside the names of the function. So if you are someone new to Clip Studio Paint and you want to learn keyboard shortcuts, um, I do recommend you go online to find those keyboard shortcut list and maybe print out a copy. Keyboard shortcuts are essential to my workflow because they improve productivity significantly for me. And if you want to learn the keyboard shortcuts from the tablet version, just go into the menu here and choose shortcut settings. And this is where you will be able to find a list of shortcuts for the tools, the menus, the functionality. So we have uh, the shortcuts for the main menu, pop-up palette, options. This part is very important. So to change brush sizes, the default shortcuts are the square brackets. So you can see them here and here. Now on this tablet, if you are not using a keyboard, it would be incredibly inconvenient and almost impossible to change the brush size. So on the tablet, they actually have this um, additional feature called the H keyboard. So this is basically a pop-up uh, menu of buttons. Some of the buttons already have shortcuts like escape, control, shift, alternate, the space, and here we have T1 to T7. These are customizable shortcut buttons. So I have this button set to increase brush size and this is to decrease or reduce brush size. So to assign shortcuts to those buttons, you just have to find the functionality that you want, click on the function and then click add shortcut and then press the key that you want. In this case here, T2. And if you want to remove the shortcut, just delete it. If you are using a physical keyboard, then there's no need to use these shortcut buttons. You can hide them by tapping here, the little icon. But if you don't have a keyboard, um, having these shortcuts, they are essential. So to change brush size, you can now just tap on the button here and you will see the cursor change in size. So now the lines are thin and now the lines are thick. Now there is one glitch, unfortunately. Say for example, I am drawing and I want to change the brush size. So let me reduce the brush size. Notice nothing happens. That's because the pen is close to the display and the cursor is visible. When the pen is close to the display or the cursor is visible, you won't be able to click on the shortcuts for some reason. I think that's intentional to prevent you from creating stray strokes while you rest your palm on the display. But the thing is palm rejection, it works like really well, like almost flawless. So uh, 
I hope Clip Studio Paint can disable uh, that and have you being able to draw here without lifting the pen and you can change the brush size because right now if you want to change the brush size you have to make a conscious effort to lift the pen away and then change the brush size if you're using a physical keyboard obviously you're not going to have such problems you can just increase decrease you don't have to lift your pen so the workflow it's very smooth very seamless all the preferences here are similar to the desktop version pen pressure settings the good thing about clip studio is it allows you to adjust the pressure curve by moving the points manually and if you want to adjust the pressure sensitivity of the S Pen with Samsung preferences, well, you won't be able to do that because they don't allow you to do that. All right, let me draw something really simple to talk about the workflow. So Control N to create a new file. This new file create dialog box is the same as the desktop version. So I have A4 selected, 300 DPI. Let me just click OK. So this is the file. Now usually when I have the blank canvas created, sometimes I would like to control plus to basically zoom in, but I'm not able to do so even though I pressed control plus. But the thing with the tablet is you can use finger gestures, so no problem at all. Control space unfortunately cannot be used to zoom because um, that shortcut is used to switch languages on the Samsung tablet. Let me just draw a very simple cube. By the way, pressure sensitivity of the S Pen is terrific. Terrific as in lines, they taper really nicely, very naturally. Transition from thin to thick, it's very smooth. Basically, you can expect really predictable performance. And if you want thin lines, you just have to press very lightly to get those thin lines and press heavily to get the thick lines. The new Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus has 120Hz display and the new pen has improved latency. So the latency is now down to 9 milliseconds. But for Clip Studio Paint, um, the latency here it's not as good compared to other drawing apps. So when you are drawing, you can still see the gap as the line tries to catch up to the pen tip, but it's no big deal. All right, let me just fill this cube with some colors. Oh. Um, all right, I need to create a new layer first. Control Shift N. So I have a new layer created there. I want to set this to multiply. And I don't want to use the colors here. So let me just open up another palette. Let's uh, click color set. So here you can see this palette. You can move this palette around just like on the desktop. You can also dock it to the side here if you want to, but I'm just going to have it overlay here. And you can resize the palette as well. So the functionality is essentially similar to the desktop. So let me just pick this bright uh, color. And let's have yellow here. I don't need this palette anymore, so let me just close this or collapse it. Maybe, maybe just close it. Okay, um, now I'm going to click Control and I'm going to click on the color layer. And it basically selects the colors here. So let's say there's a light source coming from this direction. Um, I'm going to add some shadows. I'm going to click eye for the eyedropper and I'm going to basically pick a darker color here and then fill it here. I want to add some strokes. Let me just go to the brush again. I'm going to make the brush darker. There are some moving pixels. Basically what I'm doing right now is drawing within the selection so I can draw at strokes like this and when I draw outside you can see I'm not able to draw outside because I have selected only the colors and now I can only draw within the colors 
However, if I were to draw here, you can see there's a straight stroke there because um, I'm drawing within the colors and this is also colored. So let me deselect Control D. So all the shortcuts that you can use on the desktop, they are all available here. Before I crop the canvas, maybe I want to rotate this drawing a bit. So let me select all the layers and hit the M key for the rectangular selection tool. And then Control T so that I can transform this selection. Okay, I see some lag here. The, the preview, it's not instant. So that's just the way it is. Right, let me deselect, Control D. All right, let me select this cube again and then click the crop button. Okay, time to save, Control S. Let me show you the file save dialog box. So if you save as, so all the files that you create on the tablet, they will be saved within the Clip Studio app. So the file management here presents a problem to me. Um, if I create a lot of art, I like to group the art according to the month. So there is no way for me to create a new folder and basically drag and drop all these files into the folders. So imagine if you have a lot of files, you will need to like scroll endlessly to find old files. And there is no search button or search box here. Technically speaking, you can actually export the files here out onto the internal storage or the micro SD card. Um, so you see these options here. Share basically allows you to share the file to other apps that are on the tablet. Export allows you to save the file to the downloads folder of the tablet or you can save the file onto Google Drive. And now let's open a file that was created with some other software. You can also basically download a Clip Studio file that you have created on another computer or on another tablet here onto the tablet. The process is the same. So go to File, Create New from Device Storage means to go into the tablet storage to look for a file to open and open basically just opens files that are already saved within Clip Studio. And if you want to open from your uh, tablet's internal storage, you can click this button here and click import. Notice when I click on the file, uh, nothing happens. For some reason, um, when you use the pen to click, nothing happens. But if you use your finger to click, it works. And now that file has been imported within Clip Studio. Basically, it means that that file has been duplicated. So now when you open this file and you work on it, let me just fill the layer with white and drag the layer below the letter. I'm just going to add something extra, A plus, and maybe crop this and save it. And now I can close this, Control W, Control W, and let me open up that file again. Um, that file has been saved within Clip Studio. If you go and import the original file again, notice this file has not been saved. That's because uh, once it's imported into Clip Studio, it makes a duplicate. So if you are someone who needs to import a lot of files into Clip Studio, you will need to delete a lot of duplicates. And lastly, I want to talk about licensing. So Clip Studio Paint is not free. The desktop and Windows version, um, those are one-time purchases. But for the tablet version on iPad and on Android, that's a monthly subscription. And if you already have the license on desktop, you will not be able to use that license on the tablet. You have to get separate licenses. But if you are already a customer of Clips Do Paint, you do uh, get to enjoy some discounts when you buy the, when you subscribe to the money plan. 
so to get the monthly uh, subscription service you can click here if you are using an eligible tablet you can actually get to use uh, clip studio paint free for six months so you can do that with the tab s7 and s7 plus and with earlier uh, galaxy tab tablets if i remember correctly so this is how much it costs to run the software the app on this tablet so the pro version is around us six dollars per month it's uh, cheaper if you get the annual plan the ex version it's two times the pro version's price so that's the single device plan if you want to run it on two devices like on Android and on your iPad then this is the plan to get if you have the single device plan basically you have one single license you won't be able to use that license on both Android and iPad you need to get two this two device plan so that you can have two licenses and this is US $10 per month and the pro annual version is actually uh, a much better deal I mean if you pay for 12 months that's $120 but the annual version is just half price and the premium plan here allows you to use Clip Studio Paint on four devices so now you can use uh, CSP on iPad on Android on your Windows um, desktop and also on your Mac desktop and that's for the monthly price of around US $12 which is quite a good deal and the annual plan of course it's even better it's almost half the price if you were to pay this $12 for 12 months I will put the link to where you can find the prices in the video description below so basically uh, all you need to know is the annual plan it's around 50% off the monthly plan if you are someone who uses Clip Studio Paint a lot, um, it's definitely worth the money. And if you are new to Clip Studio Paint, this is a terrific app for drawing, for digital illustration, manga, and you can even use it for animation. Um, it's really worth the money. This is a very professional um, level app oops I spelled this wrongly this is about as professional as any drawing app can get and it's really fantastic for the company to bring Clip Studio over to Android I mean this this is a fantastic app